Good evening and welcome to the Board of Commissioners meeting for September 27, 2016. We're glad you're with us today. Before we call the meeting officially to order, we are going, we are going to have the indication and the pledge presented. The indication tonight will be presented by Chaplain Mike Cronin, who is the chaplain for precincts three and four, and the associate pastor for East West Church and Hurt Road in Marietta. That'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. That'll be led by Firefighter Clark Kelly, who has been with COP Fire since January 2004. He is assigned to Station 28 C Shift. For those who wish to do so, please rise for the invocation and the pledge. I invite you to join me if you will. May we pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, creator of all that is, possessor of heaven and earth, Lord, we humble ourselves before you tonight and give you thanks for this opportunity for this gathering. Father, I bring before you this board of commissioners and these citizens, and I ask, Father, that all that's said and done in this place tonight would be honorable in your sight. In your word, you admonish us to seek the wisdom that is from above, for it is pure and peaceable and it is easily entreated. And so, Lord, this is the wisdom that we seek in our deliberation, in our discussion, in our decisions and choices tonight. Lord, may your wisdom prevail. These things I ask by the authority of my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I thank you, Lord, that you hear us when we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chamberlain. Thank you, Firefighter Kelly, for being with us today. We'll call this meeting officially to order. Earlier today, um, we had presentations at our work session under tab one. Tonight, we begin our Evening with presentations under tab two. There are two to be led by Commissioner Cupid. The first is to present a proclamation to Blake Kenya. Commissioner. Good evening, everyone. T tonight I have opportunity to recognize scouting in South Cobb and want to start off by recognizing a significant contributor to the program, which is um, to honor Blake Kenya for his contributions to the Boy Scout program in South Cobb. Mr. Kenya, if you don't mind coming up and you can bring your lovely family with you to also be recognized for their support of you. off your good works. <laughs> Blake, if you don't mind joining me, uh, me here. Okay. I've known Blake for some time, and it's nice to see um, us have opportunity to recognize you and um, just some of your contribution to the district. I think that you've had a significant role because of the um, work that you've done with a lot of young people and knowing that that work is generational, um, this proclamation certainly doesn't give proper recognition for all that you do, but I'm glad that we have the opportunity to recognize you tonight. And um, I think what we also have here, um, some members of the Atlanta Area Council. I don't know if anybody wants to join us while we do this recognition, Mr. Tracy Teka. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, I'm gonna read this proclamation from the Board of Commissioners. Whereas Blake Kenya has been intricately involved in the initiative to bring scouting to South Cobb, during 2015, five new Boy Scout programs were established in the area. Since then, more than 60 youth have experienced the excitement and outdoor adventures of scouting. Whereas the mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes, by instilling in them the values of the Scout Oath and Law. 
The new programs include Austell, First United Methodist Church, Gospel Nation Church, Riverside Intermediate School Elementary, and Walton Crossing Community Apartments. And whereas Kenya is also the president and principal designer of AbsoCore Architectural Design, an external design company based in Atlanta, he is a graduate of Colorado State University, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in business. And whereas Mr. Kenya served our country bravely in the United States Army and served three tours overseas. He attended Airborne School and Ranger Academy and was selected by the U.S. Army Board to attend Drill Sergeant Academy, where he graduated with honors. In addition to his tireless work on behalf of the Boy Scouts of America, Mr. Kenya's other community service efforts include working with the Cobb County Development Authority and Cobb County School System. Now, therefore, we, the Cobb Board of Commissioners, do hereby thank Blake Kenya for helping to positively impact the lives of our South Cobb youth through Boy Scouting. His work to enrich our community will have lasting impacts for generations to come. Thank you, Blake. Thank you for all that you've done. It is truly an honor to receive this from one of the greatest counties of all, and that's Cobb County. I will continue to work hard to be not only a good citizen, but to pay complete tribute to where I live in Cobb. Thank you so very much for your kindness. Thank you. The second item is to present a proclamation to the Atlanta Area Council of the Boy Scouts of America. Commissioner. Tonight we're honored to have the Scout Executive for the Atlanta Area Council of Boy Scouts, Mr. Tracy Tekau. And I'm very glad to recognize his efforts in increasing scouting in South Cobb and also the partnership that they've had with the Cobb Chamber and businesses here. So I would like to take some time to recognize that by reading this proclamation that I'm going to present to Mr. Tekau tonight. Whereas during 2015, five new Boy Scouting programs were established in South Cobb, successfully achieving a goal of the Atlanta Area Council of the Boy Scouts of America. This initiative was the response to a call by the Cobb Chamber of Commerce to bring more services to South Cobb. And the new programs, again, include Austo First United Methodist Church, Gospel Nation Church, Riverside Intermediate School Elementary, and Walton Crossings Community Apartments. Because of this initiative, more than 60 of our youth have been experiencing the excitement and outdoor adventures of scouting, including one of my neighbor's children. The mission of the Boy Scouts of America is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of our scout oath and law. And whereas Atlanta Area Council Board Member Brantley Bureau chaired the effort and led a team in securing funding for the program start and funding to carry the program into 2016. The funding ensures boys have scout uniforms and scholarships to attend camps. Youth outreach workers also interact directly with youth. And whereas the Home Depot Foundation has provided lead sponsorship for these programs and Gas South has also been an exemplary strong supporter. Additional funding has been provided by England and Stubbs Electrical Construction, United Forming, McKenney's, Palmato Automatic Sprinkler Company, Mulkey Enterprises, and committee member gifts. Now therefore, we the Cobb County Board of Commissioners do thank the Atlanta Area Council, volunteers and sponsors for helping to positively impact the lives of our youth in South Cobb through Boy Scouting. We wish these five new programs continued success and even forward to even more growth in District 4 in Cobb County. Thank you so much, Thank Tracy. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner Cupid, and to all the commissioners for this recognition for scouting. Uh, we are thriving in Cobb County and across metropolitan Atlanta. We serve 32,000 youth through 10,000 volunteers. 
and we couldn't do it without the support of the community, and we're especially grateful for Commissioner Cupid's leadership as we grew more programs in South Cobb. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It takes us to tab three, Sun Trust Park update. Tonight's presentation will be presented by our water department agency director, Steve McCullers, who is our acting county manager this week. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see. As you can see, we're just under $385 million completed to date. The ballpark is just under 80% complete. Uh, I'd point out that well over $200 million has been contracted with Cobb County firms, and just a hair under $100 million has been with DBEs. So we're doing very well on both of those fronts also. Currently, we're averaging a little over 1,100 workers on the ballpark site every day of the week. 500 workers on the um, ballpark site on weekends and about 145 workers on the mixed use sites. You can see the level of manpower that we do have on the site. This is really a big deal. Bring it home luncheon. To me, this is incredible. They've, they've spent over 3 million man hours on this project with no lost time injuries to date. I've, I've done some big projects and this, this is just incredible, the level of safety that they've been able to achieve on this project. As you can see, they had a, uh, a, a luncheon for all the, uh, all the workers on the site. Uh, it's really a big deal. AB does a great job of recognizing, emphasizing safety. Um, currently, they're on schedule. As you know, they've scheduled an exhibition game with the Yankees for March 30th. That'll be kind of a soft opening next year. Then they'll go on the road for a couple of weeks, and the homeowner will actually be against the Padres on April 14th. Presumably, if there are any glitches with the uh, exhibition game with the Yankees, that'll give them a couple of weeks to get everything totally cleaned up. And as usual, we do have some pictures. Now, this is looking from basically 75. You can see the parking deck in the foreground with the stadium in the background and the mixed use uh, extending on into the, towards the horizon. View from the right field corner, you can see the uh, seats um, a view of the right field corner, excuse me. Seats are in in left field. Seats are in down the right field line. This is a view of, from center field of the home plate area. As you can see, all the cranes, everything is off the infield. That's the, the first layer of under uh, stone for the, for the field that they'll eventually put down. I think they probably won't actually sod the field until next spring, which is interesting that they're waiting that long. But... Um, View of center field, again, you can see some of the seats are in. This is uh, shooting across the center field wall. They're very excited about, excited about these ergonomic mesh breathable seats. Two arms to the seat, mesh to try to keep everything a little bit cooler. Um, I think they're looking at about 25% of the seats will be this particular style. It's an area of premium seating. They've got the support rails up. You can see the little ledges there to put your food on. Um, Concession lower level, doing some of the interior work, some of the finishes. Lower level uh, for traffic, concourse down the first baseline. This is a central commissary where the, the main food preparation will take place for the players and um, for, for those visitors that are uh, involved in that aspect of things, the visiting team. Terrace club, looking out over the field. Bird's eye view from home plate, looking out towards uh, the center field wall and ultimately down towards Atlanta. We had a bigger shot. Some, some shots from the uh, mixed use side of things, the plaza with the Omni Hotel, the Comcast building. All of that's moving along quickly, but will not be ready uh, opening day. As always, public safety is working very closely with the Braves to make sure everything stays safe. And this was kind of a big deal. This was the last piece of architectural precast concrete that was delivered to the stadium, now put into place. Questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any comments or questions from the boards? Thank you, sir. Thank you. This takes us to tab four, community development, one item. 
to conduct the first public hearing to solicit comments and input on the proposed amendments to chapter 78 and 134. Director Johnson. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Debbie Blair and myself with the Debbie Blair at the County Attorney's Office and, I, and myself are here uh, to present the code amendments for this particular cycle, sir. As a reminder for those that are here for the code amendment public hearings, um, code amendments do occur from time to time by the Board of Commissioners. Um, this particular section of codes have, has three codes in them. Two of them are the results of the Board of Commissioners asking for us to relook at some of our ordinances, and one is being bought, brought forward by staff uh, for consideration. Um, the first of these uh, codes being considered today, sir, is the vending ordinance. Um, as a reminder, the purpose of the vending ordinance is to provide a mechanism whereby vending carts will be allowed in certain mixed-use development districts. <coughs> Um, this will be for the sale of merchandise, via, um, merchandise, food, drink, and other type of, of um, items. There were some concerns was when this was brought about that were expressed about the violation section of this particular ordinance. So staff, working very closely with the county attorney's office, has re-looked at this and realigned it with state law, so it just provides reference to our magistrate court and, and the state law in regards to um, misdemeanors with the magistrate court, sir. The second portion of the code is the accessory, the accessory special event parking ordinance. Uh, the purpose of the accessory special event parking ordinance is to address issues of traffic flow, pedestrian safety, protection of personal property, and the preservation of neighborhood integrity um, in areas where you have um, large events. This is done by establishing a very easy and common sense process that will allow for parking to supplement that, that to supplement parking that will be provided by the special events that occur in Cobb County. The reason this code is necessary is it'll provide a mechanism for the county to, to take all parking operations for special events into consideration as we are, as public safety and DOT are working out all of the traffic flow issues for these special events. The application process in, in this particular dra um, draft that's been brought forward has been simplified substantially so that all prospective businesses that wish to provide parking can obtain approval through the Com Community Development Agency without needing to have approval from the Board of Commissioners. Um, only those businesses that do not meet the safety requirements of the code would be required to have a hearing in front of the board. As part of the recommendations, the half mile buffer, which was in the previous um, approved ordinance, was removed. As part of the, um, as applications are submitted for consideration, staff will have 15 days to, to review the completed application. If staff does not approve or deny within that time frame, then it will be deemed granted. Staff within public safety, community development, and the Department of Transportation will all work together in the review of the applications that are submitted. The code has maintained a majority of the operational requirements that were in the original code that was approved back in February. This includes requirements for signage, attendance, lot requirements, lighting, and cleanup of lots after an event. Finally, the, he the hearing procedures, appeals, offenses, and penalties were all updated based upon the new tone that this particular ordinance has uh, brought forward, sir. The last portion of the code amendments, sir, are with our sign fees. Um, right now, our sign fees are based on a percentage of cost of a sign. And staff is recommending that we simplify this for our customers and base the sign fee off the size of the sign. So then the larger the size of the sign, the higher the cost of the of, of the permit fee. We think this will be uh, better for our customers. They'll know what they'll be paying for a sign permit before they even come into the office, and it'll certainly um, make it better for our customers as well as administration of this ordinance. Tonight, sir, is the first public hearing. After we're done, I would ask you to please open the first public hearing to receive public comments on these three items. There will be a follow-up public hearing um, on October the 25th at 7 o'clock in this room, sir. Um, after that meeting on October 25th, the board may at that pleasure decide if they wish to approve any of the ordinances that are presented here today. 
Uh, for those who wish to come and speak at the Planning Commission, they will have a public hearing on October the 4th at 9 o'clock in the morning. The Planning Commission only will hear items contained in Section 134, which is the sign fees, sir. And with that, sir, I'd request you to please open the public hearing. Thank you very much. We will open that public hearing at this time. Anyone wishing to speak on any of the specific code amendments recommended tonight, please come forward. Each speaker will have three minutes. There is no limit to the number of speakers as it pertains to this particular issue. First speaker, please. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Ron Siphon. I'm here to speak on the special events parking ordinance. I sent all of you an email. Um, hopefully you saw my column in the MDJ on Sunday also. Um, I'm not gonna go through the specific recommendations. You, you already have that. Um, but I do want to just to address a, a few more issues with regard to this ordinance. Um, first of all, it's a big improvement over what was uh, adopted in February. Um, it, I don't know if you've already tweaked the language in 78-406-4D uh, to, to make it clear how many attendants are being required. If that's already been done, that's great. If, if not, that really needs to be done. Um, in my column, I tried to... to um, the, the ordinance doesn't, it requires a parking plan and an impact statement, but it doesn't really tell anybody who would be trying for a, a, a license what they need to address in that parking plan and impact statement. So I tried to uh, put together a, an example of how it could impact traffic flow. So I tried to describe the mechanics of if you set up your, your operation one way, you're gonna back up traffic into the street and block traffic on the street for everybody. If you set it up this other way, you'll avoid backing up traffic into the street. But that's just one example. I don't know all of the things on traffic flow and public safety and all of the specifics that you all want the applicant to address in the parking plan and the impact statement. The, and I don't know why they need a separate impact statement. Maybe they could have that included as part of the parking plan. But somewhere, either in the ordinance or some, something whenever somebody comes to the county and wants to, to apply for a license, they need to know what it is that their parking plan needs. What are, what are the four issues, ten issues, whatever, that Cobb County needs for the applicant to address. So you need to provide that information. And the other thing is um, the question of whether this ordinance uh, applies to the Braves or if the Braves are exempt. So using the same example of, of setting up your operation where you would be blocking traffic onto the street, the Braves shouldn't be exempt from that and they shouldn't be exempt from public safety the, the questions that I'm hearing from the businesses near the stadium that they're concerned about is that Cobb County's implementing something that's, that's an excessive burden on them. And Thank you, Mr. I don't Stockton. think it should be, Thank you, but sir. you need to be sure that it isn't. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Are there any other speakers for the code amendments being presented? I'd like to, we'll close the public hearing at this time. At this I'd like to remind folks that there's about four weeks in which we will take comments on the proposed changes. Um, I would recommend that the comments be submitted to individual commissioners, the commissioner, commission at large, Dana, his office. Um, we welcome that comments. And if there's any businesses out there that happen to think that we're heading in the wrong direction, I sure would like to hear from them directly. Anything else, Mr. Johnson? No, sir, the board has any Does the board have any questions or comments? Thank you, sir. So take us to tab five. For those folks that are here tonight for the budget proposal, what we're about to do is conduct a public hearing on the proposed FY17 budget. You'll note if you examined the agenda book for today, the tab 11 is actually the item in which we approve, present and, and present and consider approving the budget we are going to hear first tab 
five as it relates to a, a public hearing for the proposed budget then we will move to tab 11 and consider that proposed budget at that time during this public hearing each speaker will be allowed the opportunity after the presentation three minutes and there's no limit to the number of folks that will eligible to speak to us good morning or good evening Good evening, sir, and commissioners, chairman. At this time, I want to present the FY17 proposed budget before we move into the public hearing. Uh, thanks, sir. Okay. And there we go. Um, on August 22nd, we advertised in the Mar Marietta Daily Journal, and on September 13th, we conducted our first public hearing. At this time, we are about to open our second public hearing. And then we will be moving to ask the board for adoption a little bit or after the conclusion of that public hearing. The FY17 budget includes 70 new full time positions um, in community development, magistrate court, Department of Transportation, district attorney, and the library. Additionally, we have fire district fund, has positions, streetlight district fund, and those are the all the new positions we're asking to be created under this budget and then there will also be some reclassified positions magistrate court has one reclassified position and the fire district fund has five okay the general fund is the primary operating fund for the county it is used to account for all financial resources ex for the government except for those required to be accounted for in other funds Property taxes make up the vast majority of the revenues for this fund, and that includes that equals 57% of the overall revenues. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, if you'll notice, the FY17 proposed budget is $383,591,580, and it's a 9.3% increase over the adopted FY16. 14.4 million of that increase is directly related to the debt service on the stadium bonds. And this is a millage rate comparison multiplier. We just like to show this. Uh, we show 2008 as kind of the benchmark prior to the recession. And then we show 2017. If you'll notice in 2008, our millage rate was 6.82 mils. And the adopted millage rate for FY16, which we're continuing, and that is the operating millage rate for the general fund, is 6.66 mils. And one of the things I want to call to your attention is 2017, you'll notice the growth in the net digest being 5.49%. It is a little bit higher than we had in 2016. And the reason for that is 2017, we'll have a commercial reval year, and we do that every three years. Okay. And then also we want to show a millage rate comparison for the metro area. And this is their 2016 millage rates that were adopted. DeKalb County is at 20.81 mils, and this is countywide. Gwinnett County, 13.176 mils, Fulton County, 10.8, and Cobb County, 9.85. So we are continued to be the lowest millage rate within the metro area. Okay, additionally, this is the general fund revenues. And as I mentioned before, property tax is the vast majority of this. Most of these have significant increases over prior year. I do want to point out, though, that penalties and interest has a decrease of 25.5%. This is a good thing. Um, what this means is the county is collecting t property taxes on time and we're not having to charge citizens for late payment or penalties and interest on late payments for property taxes. Um, and additionally, I want to call your attention to fines and forfeitures. It's down 9.3%. This has been a continuing trend nationwide as we've looked at uh, traffic citations as a whole being down. But as I stated, the overall increase for the general fund is 9.3%. The next slide is the general fund expenditures, and we've broken this down into several categories, personal services. Um, I mentioned earlier that this, this uh, fund and the county as a whole, we've added 70 positions, not all of which are general fund. But the personnel numbers that you see here, which is $260,628,995 as proposed for FY17, that does not include any of those new positions. Those positions are being accounted for in the contingency account and will be moved to personnel as they are filled or as they are needed. So we did not inflate that personnel number by the new positions. And the, the reason for this increase is due to health care costs, 
pension increases and the merit that was approved for FY16. Okay, the uh, the major the major change or major thing I want to point out here is that the operating budgets are essentially flat, less than point or 0.1% increase over prior years. We've made a, sm uh, a few small improvements, but for the most part, those are basically flat. Uh, debt service, as I mentioned earlier, that 14.3 or 14.4 million that you see there is directly related to the stadium bonds. Um, transfers out, you'll notice a significant increase as well. This is due to increases in transit subsidy and FTA local match. All right. The FY17 proposed operating budgets are broken into two categories. Uh, this is the governmental funds. This includes general fund, claims fund, CSBG, debt service, E901, fire, hotel, motel, law library, parking deck, street lights, Cumberland Special Service District 1 and 2, and Six Flags Special Service District. The total for these funds is $613,995,472, and the overall increase is 9.8% over the adopted FY16. Additionally, within the operating funds, we have business type funds, and this includes golf course, solid waste, transit, and water. The total of these funds equals $243,972,803, overall increase of 6%, and, but the total operating funds countywide are $857,968,275 for a total of an 8.7% increase over the adopted FY16. In addition to the operating funds, the county also annually adopts capital projects funds, including 800 megahertz capital projects, water, RE&I, water system development fees. These funds total $78,926,569 for a 3.8% increase over prior year. Okay. And at this time, before I open it up for questions or comments, I would just like to thank the county staff, the county manager, the county commissioners, chairman, for their hard work throughout this process. This has been a very long process, and uh, we appreciate everybody's assistance and willingness to work with the staff. Thank you, sir. At this time, we will open up the public hearing for the proposed FY 2017 budget. Again, those wishing to come speak have three minutes per person. And if come on forward. If you wish to speak, I would appreciate... Go ahead. Come on. If you wish to speak, I would appreciate it if you could line up down the, the aisle so that we can uh, move as quickly as we possibly can with this. Roberta? Okay. Good evening, Chairman Lee and Commissioners. My name is Roberta Cook. I live in Mapleton, Georgia. I'm an, I'm a, an active in a citizen group called the Cobb Parks Coalition. For those of you out there listening and watching, our <laughs> thank you. We have a lot of the coalition here. Our our website is cobparkscoalition.org, so you can find out more about the subject I'll be talking about this evening. Uh, earlier, you had a presentation and update on SunTrust Park uh, and the Bring It Home Luncheon. Well. We would like to have a bring it home luncheon too for the Cobb County Park Bond. So let's plan on that and add that to the budget, please. We are citizens from every Cobb County district who have united to support the $40 million Cobb County Park Bond funding. A referendum to buy new, new park land in Cobb County approved by voters via the ballot box in November of 2008. After 29 properties were recommended for acquisition under the program by the commissioner appointed Park Bond Citizen Advisory Committee, the program was suspended due to the downturn of the economy. As a result, no land was purchased for parks. Since the economy rebounded, we can thank you Chairman Lee and commissioners for reinstatement of the program in January 2016. This year, the commissioner appointed Cab County Recreation Board assumed the responsibility of vetting new property nominations for prospective parks. Next month, 
That committee will produce a list of properties recommended for acquisition. To purchase the recommended properties, the program requires funding. $40 million of funding is mandated by the Cobb County voters. Since you are finalizing the budget now for 2017, we think this would be an appropriate time to enlighten us on your intentions for the $40 million needed to purchase new land for parks. Would you please take the time during this meeting today to update the public on this funding? In closing, for those in the audience who would like more information about the $40 million park bond referendum, visit the Cobb Parks Coalition website at cobbparkscoalition.org. Park, Cobb Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the <clears throat> Excuse me, members of the board. My name is Ben Williams, I'm president of the Cobb County chapter <clears throat> of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I live at 5307 LC Lane, Mableton, Georgia. A um, <clears throat> couple of items. One, I would hope that <clears throat> in your budget deliberations, <clears throat> you would uh, provide uh, adequate funding uh, to kick off Sunday bus service. Um, number of our folk still are challenged in terms of <clears throat> being able to have additional routes in order to move uh, uh, from uh, one place in the county that is deep south to other places. Case in, case in point, <clears throat> a resident who's interested in taking advantage of early voting up at Whitlock uh, talks about over three hours uh, from where she lives <clears throat> in, in, in South Cobb in order to get there and, and come back, okay? Um, I know that <clears throat> Sunday bus service is scheduled someplace else, but I use that example to show how challenging it is uh, for many residents of South Cobb uh, to get to, uh, uh, to places within the county. Um, the uh, um, flex bus, bus uh, schedule is still... <clears throat> um, on a trial basis, um, we would like for you to really stay with that commitment and uh, keep that in motion, uh, as well as uh, making sure that there is adequate equipment, uh, lighting and benches, uh, as we uh, expand or try to improve existing uh, bus service. Over the last uh, year or so, there's been a noticeable change in the aesthetics of the right-of-way in South Cobb. As I move throughout the county, um, I'm pleased to see uh, that uh, in many places where there are right-of-ways, uh, there is, appears to be some investment equity to make sure that those right-of-ways in South Cobb begin to at least move in the direction that they are parallel to other places in other parts of the county. Um, I would join the, uh, our, our green people uh, with the uh, support for the park. Uh, bond issue, an item, <clears throat> an item that is overdue, and I think uh, uh, folk are uh, voted on and are, are expecting to have happen. Final thing is uh, Mabel House. Uh, Mabel House has <coughs> been struggling to stay alive uh, with, uh, I think, one full-time staff person. Would really like for you to consider reinvesting uh, public monies in helping to sustain uh, the Mabel House. Mabel House Thank not only serves South Cobb, but also you know, all of Cobb and Thank you, outside. sir. Okay. I want to remind Thank the you. other folks that are here today that there's a timer to your left up there. So when you come up to speak, if you keep an eye on that, I appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Chris Smith, and I'm a resident of Potter Springs and I consider myself a community activist. And why is that? Because my community simply means a lot to me. And the changes that go on, whether they're good or bad, and also the citizens that live in and around my community. I sent all of the Board of Commissioners 
an email a few days ago, and I don't know if you received it, but I'd like to take time to just read it. I am requesting that the Board of Commissioners add additional staff to recreation centers and libraries. If you can't hire full-time staff, please consider hiring part-time staff, especially in areas with at-risk youth, such as the Ron Anderson Community Center and the South Co-op Rec Center and Fair Oaks. It's not enough to say that we care about the youth when we don't provide them a safe place in our community and get them off the streets by providing extended hours, particularly on Fridays and Saturdays. Oftentimes, citizens talk about youth trolling the neighborhoods with no place to go. The malls in the area don't want the youth to hang out with valid reasons. Citizens don't want them trolling the neighborhoods or just hanging out. It has been proven in other states, such as Baltimore, that providing a safe play, place for youth to play basketball and other sports activities provide an alternative to unconstructive uh, behavior um, in the community, particularly on Friday and Saturday nights. If the recs could be extended to maybe 11, if you guys could consider that. Volunteers can help bridge the gap with county staff. However, extended hours and additional staff would be a step in the right direction. In addition, your staff is doing the best they can with what they have. Honestly, it's not enough to serve a growing community. While I cannot attest to other areas, I can attest to the, the increase in subdivisions, growth in Potter Springs and surrounding areas. It's not fair or reasonable to expect your staff to be overworked and face disappointment with the customers and the constituents in your county because you won't give them the staffing or the resources they need. Furthermore, you're providing the bare essentials to your constituents. In Powder Springs, there is a company who started off saying that they wanted to build Thank 55 you, Ms. homes. Thank you, your time. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Chair, Board of Commissioners, uh, citizens, and um, my name is Gwyneth Reed. I am the chair of Mableton Austell Parish Community Coalition. We hereby petition the Cobb County Board of Commissioners and the Cobb County Parks and Recreation Department to provide funds for the following items. We are of, of the opinion that the Palace Springs is in need of community resource center, but also <clears throat> we need funds to expand staffing and hours at the rec center and libraries. Expanding the million dollar budget funds to provide the Ron Anderson Rec Center, which is the hub of our community, increase staff and open hours. This provides our families and youth with more access to the center. It also helps reduce illness and improves well-being. To help our residents with health and wellness opportunities and stop the radicalization of our youth to gangs and other um, criminality. You know, oftentimes, you know, as the Bible says, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Our kids have nothing to do in Powder Springs. And the few opportunities they have, they have to be able to afford to pay for it at Devon Edison. There's no free opportunities for workforce training, soft skills, coding, computer labs. We need something more for our young people to do. Vocational training is very important. And you'd be surprised how talented and gifted our youth are. And we would really appreciate you to consider funding and expanding the Ryan Anderson Rec Center. This reinvestment in funding will increase uh, school programming, summer camp, and mentoring programs. We also belong to the Palace Spring Task Force, which is a volunteer agency. And that agency has provided resources such as book bags and school supplies for 15 years. But we too would appreciate the funding to help the Ron Anderson Rec Center provide our youth, our families, with not just a building, 
but a building that actually makes a difference in their life. I grew up with a community center. My first job was in a community center, summer camp. My first um, exposure to a computer was at a rec center. And I appreciate everything that you've done so far, but please make that a line item object in your proposal when you're considering Ron Anderson and the Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ann. Next speaker, next speaker, please. Yes, my name's Steve Young. I live in Mableton. Um, I'm speaking like a lot of uh, concerned about the parks bond, like a lot of other people here. Uh, in 2010, y'all floated uh, some bonds and, and funded that stadium over there in Cumberland, but you gave short shrift to the uh, parks and recreation bond, which is something we voted for. Y'all voted for the, uh, the stadium, so that's on you. The, the, the parks is on us. That's where we wanted our money to go, so I urged the the board to make good on that because you all are our employees and that's what we requested. So I'm joining a lot of these other individuals in, in support of fully funding the parks bond. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, commissioners. Uh, my name is Ted Varno and I'm here with my wife, Rosie, and some other volunteers. And we're volunteers at Cobb County Animal Control. And I've had the pleasure of speaking with Commissioner Cupid and Commissioner Burrell. And what I'd like to ask for is your support with the shelter. For example, we volunteer there, but we also volunteer at um, some rescues and try to get the animals out before they're euthanized. And we had an idea, for example, like a cat room, a 16 by 12 quarantine room, because currently sick animals are mixed sometimes with healthy animals and then it spreads. I think this would be a payback. If you went ahead and separated it, it would allow for less medicine being used by the county and eventually help the animals. So it, I think it's the humane thing to do, and there's many of us volunteers willing to help. We come every day, or we're every day at our places of work. We believe in the county and we want to contribute. So I hope you'll continue. And by the way, the staff there is excellent. They always work with us. They ask our ideas, but they do need help and funding. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, and members of the community. My name is Karen Carter, and I'm the executive director of Cobb Collaborative, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the nonprofit organizations that our organization serves here in Cobb. For 18 years, the Cobb County Board of Commissioners has outsourced the facilitation of the Cobb County nonprofit grant to the Cobb Collaborative, providing over $19 million for our neighbors and friends in their time of need. Data collected from the 23 organizations currently receiving that funding shows that for FY 215, 10,390 unduplicated Cobb County citizens were served, over 50% of them receiving basic needs such as food, clothing, shelter, health care, and remaining stably housed. Under education and employment services, 3,386 people were served. Public safety, legal, crime prevention equaled 1,392 Cobb County citizens. Funding for this grant has been fixed at $963,695 since it was reduced in 2012 from $1.2 million at the highest prior to 2010. This proposed budget reduces the funding an additional 113,000 or 11.73% or the most biggest statistic, 1,219 fewer of our Cobb County neighbors receiving needed resources. As our county continues to grow and thrive, the need for resources will continue to grow exponentially. Please consider not only returning the funding for the Cobb County nonprofit grant to its 963,695 level, but increasing it to the previous 2010 level of 1.2 million, so that we can better support our Cobb County residents through the nonprofit work being done. 
As you consider our request, I would like to close by reading a short poem by Dr. Donna Beagle, someone who broke the cycle of generational poverty. I find myself more late with every crisis, more angry with every injustice, more greedy with every deprivation, more rude with every judgment, more disorganized with every eviction, more negative with every untreated illness, more unstable with every insecurity. I find myself more civil with every bite, more respectful with every kindness, more hopeful with every chance, more grateful with every opportunity, more ready to learn when I am safe and more ready and more motivated when there is hope, more happy when I am valued. I find myself like the 37 million people in poverty responding in very human ways to my environment. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Burke and um, from East Cobb, and I'm a member of the Cobb Parks Coalition. I'm going to cover a timeline of the Cobb Parks Coalition and the Park Bond 2008 to today's 2017 budget and explain why funding this park bond is so critical now. In November 2008, voters overwhelmingly approved the Park Bond 2008 referendum, and the repayment was planned with 0.1 mils of the debt service fund equal to about $8 a year for the average homeowner. Here is a history of the debt service fund. In 2009, the board decided to postpone Park Bond 2009 due to the economy. For years, Park Bond supporters have asked the board to fund the Park Bond as communities lost their chosen parkland to development. In these cases, justice delayed is justice denied. In 2013, the board announced the Brave Stadium would be built in Cobb County. And in 2014, we read on the Cobb County website that the Braves Stadium is funded by shifting tax money from repaid park bonds to the debt service fund. The problem, Park Bond 2008 was never funded. Once we discovered the millage shift plan, concerned citizens asked the board to issue the $40 million park bond before shifting the exact tax money into the Braves Stadium bond. In 2015, the Cobb Parks Coalition resurrected and met with each commissioner to explain the importance of funding the park bond 2008 before the shift to avoid a misuse of funds. In November 2015, we learned the Brave Stadium only needed 0.23 of the total 0.33 in the debt service fund, which was great news because that would leave 0.1 available for funding Park Bond 2008, the exact amount needed. Then in January, we were happy to learn the board restarted the Park Bond program. Even though the county had a list of 29 properties selected for Park Bond 2008, and some of them were still available, the board decided to make a new list scheduled to be announced on October 25th, 2016. But then in July 2016, we learned the board would lower the debt service fund by 0.1, again, the exact amount needed to fund Park Bond 2008. Today in the 2017 budget, the board officially moves the 0.23 originally planned for Park Bond repayment into the Braves Stadium bond. A key point here is that the board could have paid for Thank both for the $40 comments. million dollar park bond and the $400 million Brave Stadium ma your time is if the board hadn't lowered the debt service fund. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Nancy Geisler. I serve as the president of the Vinings Village Homeowners Association and the interim president of the Vinings Conserva uh, Community Conservation Alliance. I'm a member of the Vinings Historic Preservation Board and the Civic Club. And I bring these forward because it means I spend a lot of time talking with voters and residents in the community. And after hearing what Jennifer Burke just presented, uh, as my, con my constituencies have heard, they cannot understand why their county commission continues to ignore a voter referendum, the 2008 park bond, that passed with two thirds of voters uh, supporting it. They understood that in the weak economy, economy, it wasn't possible to fund it, but when it became possible to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to support a private entity, the, the Braves, it became possible to fund the park bond. And they're very disappointed, some even outraged, that there is no funding for parks in the 2017 Cobb County budget. And it goes further. Last spring, the county directed the community to nominate properties that might be a good opportunity. Uh, several hundred were nominated. The, uh, the rec board vetted the nominations and is in the process of preparing a list that will be presented in October. And all that work by all those faithful volunteers and the tax dollars they spent doing it. And what's going to happen in 2017? Nothing. Nothing again. Because the 2017 budget for parks is zero at this point. Most people now view it that that nominating and vetting process was disingenuous if no funding is going to be made available in the 2017 budget. In voters' eyes, their Cobb County Commission has ignored their vote and their wishes. It's a serious breach of trust at a time when organizations like the one in which I, ones in which I participate are working well with the county. It makes my job as a community leader a lot harder. It pains me to say this because I know there are some of you who are in favor of funding the park bond and want to use it to offset the beautiful forest that was cut down to serve the need of, needs of the Braves. So I acknowledge that it is hard, really, really hard, in, uh, in amid all the commitments that you have to the Braves to find money to support the park, to fund the park bond. But it was hard for all of the people in green out here and, and with green signs out here to repeatedly show up and testify to this commission. So they did the hard thing, and I'm asking you to, to do the hard thing and fund the park bond. Thank you very much. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. I'm Kenneth Howell with the Georgia Community Coalition. Nice to see you guys this evening. I wanted to speak to the 1.1% uh, increase in the transit funding. Uh, with the projects that are being, uh, have been looked at, we're looking at, uh, we talked with Faye DiMasio, uh before she left on several occasions on the new transit center at South Cobb that would service the Route 20, the new Route 25, the 30, and the Flex bus system. We also talked about reopening the kiosk at Cumberland. Once the Brave Stadium is open, we have eight buses in there at one time, and that's not including the circulars. We, re we need to refurbish that Cumberland Transfer Center Otherwise, we're going to run out of room up there, and we're not going to be able to service the way that we're doing now. The uh, circular service at, at, at Cumberland is uh, going to take up a lot of space. You're talking about five buses running, and we, we just don't have the room up there. We, we, you know, the police are going to have enough trouble helping us get in and out. We really need to move that transfer center. Uh, the Sunday bus service with a 1.1% increase sounds a little impossible to do. And I don't know what the plans are, but 1.1 just does not seem like a figure that's going to be able to make that possible. We also need to complete the branding of the Cobb County bus system. We have branded some of the buses came in already done. Some of them need to be refurbished. But we have the express bus service that needs to be branded as well. 
to, you know, we're going to do a job, do it right. We, if people are going to come in the car and see all this stuff that we've done, let's look good. Let's not look like we have done a job. The uh, expansion of zones two and three for the flex system, we, I've asked for it last night at the, uh, at the Transit Advisory Board. I don't know if, they, if, if they're going to give it to us, but if we don't, increase the flex bus service in that area, then it, it's almost set up for failure. Zone one is doing good. We need this increase in zones two and three. Uh, pretty much that's all I have this evening, uh, commissioners. However, I want you to, to take under consideration that 1.1%, I mean, even the hotel tax that is going to uh, pay for the circulars. Thank you, Mr. Howe. We That's your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lindsay Christofferson. My husband and I moved to the Smyrna Vinings area of Cobb almost 13 years ago. At that time, Smyrna was like a small town within a big city, and we felt so fortunate to find such a wonderful community to raise our children. Within a few years after we moved, Smyrna added Taylor Bronner Park, which has proven to be extremely well used and a beautiful addition to Smyrna, enhancing the quality of life for its residents. My husband and I were thankful for the vision and planning of our local government. Fast forward to the present time, and things have changed greatly. Cobb County received a baseball stadium that its people did not vote to approve, but its politicians forced through anyway, as well as a park fund that the people did vote to approve, but its politicians have yet to fund. Cobb County is undergoing an unprecedented amount of development, but there is a lack of overall planning and forethought as to how our community should look when the development boom is over. There is a real danger that the overdevelopment will lead to unbearable traffic congestion, which will both decrease the quality of life in Cobb and the tax base in the long term, as Cobb will become a less desirable place to live. My hope, as well as the hope of so many of our friends and neighbors, is that green space will be set aside, that our politicians want to leave behind a legacy of thoughtful planning and a better community for our children that Cobb County won't just be concrete and high rises, but beautiful parks and green space for all of us to enjoy. <laughs> Cobb County is getting a tax boon from the major development projects going on. It's time to give something back to the people who have chosen to make this their home and desperately want to hold on to the quality of life that we moved here to have. Please vote for the Park Fund to make this reality. Thank you. I'm Roger Berkey from East Cobb. I moved here 57 years ago from Seattle. And when I came to town, 75 had just almost been completed. I passed, I was going to Lockheed, but I passed Marietta and I'm proceeding farther and farther and there's nothing but trees. As you know, all that area inside 285, almost down to central Atlanta when the freeway was first constructed was nothing but trees. Well, as we all know, it doesn't look that way anymore. And we've been blessed here. When I arrived, I discovered the Chattahoochee, started the campaign to work towards a park on the Chattahoochee. And uh, through the efforts of citizens, we got about 100 million federal dollars to spend here on the Chattahoochee to create that park. In the course of that campaign, I got a group together to draft what has become Metro River Protection Act to regulate land use along the Chattahoochee River. It stalled for two years in the state legislature because obviously real estate interests didn't want that. So we formed a political action committee and we threw out a state senator. And we proved at that point that Holding works. It produces results. 
And I'll tell that story many times to youngsters to encourage them and, and show them how much they can accomplish and how wonderful our system is. I'm afraid you all are going to make my message a little less cogent if you don't respond to what the voters ask you to do. And I'm very hopeful that you will because I've, I've seen progress lately. I really have confidence in you. I noticed how facile you were in shuffling funds to get money for the Braves. And I assume you'll be just as clever to come up with the money we need in the budget to fund the 40 million for park bonds. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Cynthia Patterson, and I live in District 2. In November of 2008, 67% of voters approved Parks Bond 2008 for $40 million for the purchase of parkland. In the past eight years, the Park Bond 2008 was not issued, and we have not purchased a single acre of parkland. This evening, we saw that there are $14 million allocated in the 2017 budget for the SunTrust Park Brave Stadium complex, no money budgeted to buy green space. In the eight years since Parks Bond 2008 was approved by the voters, eligible parkland has been flattened, paved, gone forever. There is some property still available, but the price, of course, has risen and will continue to rise. Mark Twain said, buy land. They're not making it anymore. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kim Borna, and I'm from the Center for Children and Young Adults, and we're the shelter and group home for youth in Cobb County. We have 40 beds, and we've been full for two and a half years, and we do turn kids away. We are now not just housing kids, but we're raising kids. Um, we are a part of the Cobb Collaborative nonprofit grants to cut our grant 11.75%. Our award would be $14,000, but what we are very proud of is we, for the past four years, have taken the money that we get from Cobb Collaborative and we have matched it dollar for dollar in fundraising in the community. And over 50% of that money we raise outside of Cobb and bring money into Cobb from the city of Atlanta and foundations. So we would be effectively cut $28,000 if there was a cut across the board for the nonprofits. Um, I want to say that our kids love to go to the parks, so we love the parks. Uh, we have four rescue dogs from the animal shelter, so we throw our support to them tonight. Um, we have, last year we had 15 kids who were at the center for over a year. We had five kids who were at the center for over two years living. We had, as of April, 10 kids who celebrated a one-year anniversary, and since April we've had eight kids celebrate a one-year anniversary. So we're raising kids. They're with us for one, two, and three years. I have a boy who is one of five seniors who will be with us three years in December. He is a part of the Leading Next Generation program um, in Cobb. He is hoping to go to the University of North Georgia, and he is going to be graduating in the spring. He rides the bus down Austell Road and works at Chick-fil-A four nights a week till 11 o'clock and has three A's and a B. So we are raising kids, we are proud of our kids, and we are proud of our youth shelter in Cobb County. So please, 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 when you're looking at that Cobb Collaborative grant, remember all the 23 agencies as well as our agency. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Joy Kramer. I live in the Smyrna Binings area. And I'm here on a couple of issues tonight, mostly budget related, but I am also an animal control um, volunteer. And I, I just want to say, addressing you all this evening, I haven't seen one smile out of the five of you. <laughs> and I know, thank you, Commissioner Burrell. I know your job is difficult, and I know that these are not easy times for you to try and keep our millage rate low, which is such an admirable thing, as well as try and fund all the very 
worthy projects that you have, but I do want to say a, a special word of attention for Cobb County Animal Control because I spend a lot of time there as a volunteer. They really need a person dedicated to communication so that we can advertise these beautiful puppies and kittens and, and homeless animals. They don't have enough traffic in there. That is the problem. That is why we are euthanizing animals because we don't have enough people coming through. So if you could see your way to dedicating somebody within the Cobb County um, Communications Department to commission themselves to focus on filming these animals and putting them out on social media, that would be a great help. The second thing that I wanted to address tonight is, um, of course, the parks bond. When I was here, I can't remember if it was last Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving before, there was um, a room full of people and at least half to 75% of them were from the Atlanta Braves. Um, they really wanted that to pass, and the, and the folks who wanted to have a referendum on were sitting in the back. Tonight, what I see with the Parks Bond is a full room of people that are all for the same thing. This is truly, truly a legacy moment for you all, so please figure out a way to fund the Parks Bond. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is George O'Donnell, and I'm a resident of East Cobb, and I'm on the board of Yells, and I want to support the request of Karen Carter to restore funding for the nonprofit grants. These, these grants are, are leveraged through private co uh, contributions, corporate contributions, and it's the best investment that Cobb County can make in its citizens and reaching the disadvantaged youth of our community and, and helping support them. And it's, it's just a great investment opportunity for this community, and it's leveraged many times over with the contributions and the volunteer efforts of volunteers throughout the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ernest Phillips, voter, Resident of Cobb County, you need to listen to the people that are here talking to you tonight. I'm talking to one member of the board. I want that one member to consider asking for the $40 million vote to be excluded from the general overall vote on the total budget. I know that you can do that. If you will do that and hold a separate vote on that $40 million so that we, the public, can know how you're voting on one issue, that's what needs to be done tonight. And I, you've already heard all the magic words that your public has told you. Parks are the ultimate showcase for what we as tax, taxpayers pay and we can use and enjoy in our activities. That's what we see. A nice big park for, for ball, love it, want it. But at the same time, we have to have places where families can go to enjoy just an outing. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. They just take the kids out, they run through the park, they play. That's what we need in this community. The thing that you're lacking here and what's going to hold you up from your, from your deliberations is that you don't have a long range plan for parks and recreation in Cobb County. What you have is a sort of a mesh of, well, okay, here's some property over here. Well, let's some over there. Let's set aside some money and maybe we'll spend it on that and maybe we won't. That's the kind of thinking that's short range and it's not good for the long range. You need the, a commission set up to look at long range planning for 10, 20, and 50 years out into the future. My background is in parks and recreation. I was chief MWR when I was in military for several years. Then I went to Peoria, Illinois, and I was the uh, superintendent of recreation for several years there. 
I know how the process works. If you've got any parks and recreation folks in here, they're gonna be able to recognize Peoria as one of the gold medal winners from the National Parks and Recreation Association. I don't see that kind of activity here in this community. So please consider my uh, suggestions. Thank you. Hi, Commissioners. It's, um, I'm Mary Kirkendall, and I just moved back to Cobb County about a year ago, and one of um, the neighborhood parks, I was shocked to see the condition it's in, and I've tried to communicate with my um, commissioner. This is our Rhine Park. Um, this is the shape I found it in, and this is our beautiful sign, the entryway. Um, this is the guide to the softball field. And this is the parking lot. So every parking lot I've got a picture of are, are going to be separate parking lots. So I want you to see all this asphalt. Um, actually, that's our new paper sign to the tennis courts. This is just some of the scenery. Uh, another parking lot. Parking lot. Beautiful pavilions, beautiful landscaping, <laughs> more parking lots, parking lots, parking lots and poles, another parking lot, and there's our new sign, the beautiful yellow and green sign that I dare you to put one of those over in the Cumberland Community District. But um, anyway, so... You guys just funded $224,000 to do a comprehensive parks plan that um, what I read was it's the first one in Cobb County in 15 years. Don't know what's been happening for 15 years, but before you, I, I don't know what that's going to include, but I would urge you to do, to take a look at your parks and let's do some new site plans on these parks but um, apparently you just funded repaving all these parking lots. And I would ask you to please discontinue that, put a stop to that, let's get a site plan for this park. Let's get on par with Gwinnett's park system. You've gotta take care of the parks. I'm all for this bond, of course, and our green space, which you guys screwed up early. That could have been a beautiful park up at Vining's at the entrance to Cobb County, all the, the lush trees and canopy we've lost now for the Braves. But, and I know you know y'all screwed up, but I would urge you to take care of the parks that we have. Let's get some new site plans and let's do things that the people want now. Meadows, native plants, dog parks, community gardens, walking trails. I was told you can't do walking trails here you, because it's too woodsy. You know, so anyway, um, I just wanted you to see these pictures. This is deplorable. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Let's get to work on it. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Norm Fagg, I live in East Cobb, and I just have a final word on the park bond. I think one of the most precious things in our American democracy is trust in government. And that is at risk. There was a referendum approved by two thirds of the voters upon which no action has been taken. That is a promise that has been broken and it needs to be set right. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Are there any other speakers that would like to come speak on the budget? Seeing and hearing none, the public hearing is closed on the proposed FY 2017 budget. Commissioners, as we discussed earlier, 
public hearing was held under tab five. Consideration for the budget is under tab 11, and we're going to move tab 11 up to this point uh, for consideration. As I mentioned, um, when we proposed, presented the budget first back in early part of September, um, that I felt it was my responsibility to present a continuation budget that took into effect the anticipated growth of the digest, conservatively, of course, and the commitments we have made in FY16 that need to be carried forward, forward into the FY17 budget. And of course, take into consideration the increase in costs associated with health care or pension issues and the merit provided in the part as part of FY16 that it carries forward in FY17. And we've done that. Bill, you, your team uh, with Jim and and buddy and all the budget analysts, not only from your department, from the different departments and elected officials with the county manager, have done a great job of evaluating and discussing everything that um, has been brought forward by not only other departments within the county manager's budget, but within fire, within water, and within elected official budgets as well. And we appreciate you coming back with a, a proposed balanced budget that is exactly what I asked for, which is a continuation budget. Again, of course, my recommendation is based on the premise that I did not want to present any additional spending for the FY17 since I won't be here when the millage has to be set and the final numbers come in for the FY17. Um, a lot of thought and process has gone, thought has gone into where we are. The commissioners have been uh, briefed on all of the requests that have been made as we outlined um, to include who made a request, where it initiated from, the purpose, the intent, the millage equivalency to do so. Um, but I find myself in a position to continue the tradition that I've been a part of for 12 years and as the, as a chairman for the last six years and that's to present a balanced conservative budget for Cobb County. That is a continuation budget from the FY16. It takes into account our mandatory spending requirements and proposes uh, to carry forward what I consider to be a reasonable balanced budget for this county for FY17. With that, I'd like to make a recommendation the Board of Commissioners adopt the FY17 budget as presented and authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Is there a second for discussion? A second for discussion by Commissioner Commissioner Ott. Any comments from the board at this time? Commissioner Ott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, first off, I want to um, commend you uh, for bringing forward a continuation budget. Um, I know it was a difficult task, um, and I think that it was the right thing to do in light of the changes that are coming. And so, like I said, I want to commend you on bringing it forward that way. Um, I also want to thank all the finance staff and um, the department heads who worked on bringing this budget forward. Um, I, know, I know that at times that the board has made it difficult with some of the things that we've approved or moved forward. Um, as a continuation budget, um, things are tight. And um, you know, you've, you've heard our commissioners talk about it and any increase in spending has to be met with either an increase in revenue by millage increase or a decrease in services. Um, that's just how tight the budget is. There is no extra dollars. So um, I'm willing to support this budget as a continuation budget. And I think that moving forward, the board has a lot of work to do to, um, to move forward the um, needs of the county and also the desires of the citizens. Thank you. Commissioner Burrell. Uh, folks. You really um, need to be respectful, please. This is the time for the right time for the board to speak. Thank you, Commissioner Burrell. And I, I'd first like to start off by saying we don't take this lightly. We've heard numerous requests from departments, from other constitutional elected officials, um, amongst ourselves. We've looked at everything from top to finish. We've had meeting after meeting. 
with Bill and Jim and the finance team, the county manager, and all of staff, um, and with each other. And um, I'd like to thank you all for your time as well. Uh, we've looked at several scenarios, and um, I think the consensus is, as Commissioner Ott supported, the continuation budget at this time. Um, when we rolled back the millage in July, I have to admit, I thought that the 8.5% increase in the tax digest was sustainable, and I agreed to roll back the millage to the 6.66. Um, after looking at everything, I mean, when we cut our across the board 10% um, operating costs in 2011, we've never restored the library hours, the, the um, operational budget back to those levels. Even though the, the digest has come back, you know, when we lower the millage and then roll back the millage and it has to um, equal out, it's tight. As, as Commissioner Ott said, it is tight. Um, with the adoption of the proposed budget, this will allow the new chairman to have input. We can set aside monies as we go, as we revisit the digest, if it comes in better. And we may not have to increase taxes. We may be able to fund some of these requests um, as, they, as they're presented throughout the year. Um, and I think, you know, by the different departments and, and constitutional officers um, coming back and presenting their uh, requests in a more detailed manner will give us the public more time and to weigh in and comment and also benefit increased transparency. Um, I'd like to thank my fellow commissioners for communicating their requests, working with this um, with me together on the budget process. And I would like to say that um, we went over a lot of different items. And for the record, I'd like to go through um, some of the ones that we see as a priority that we want to look at funding um, as a priority first. Um, the right-of-way mowing and maintenance and to privatize that throughout the county in all four districts. The Sunday bus service, I do see the need for this, for people getting to church or work, um, games, etc. The issue that we have with that as far as timing is there's currently a survey underway that DOT is providing um, to the community to see where it's needed, what's needed, and the hours. Um, also, and that will not come back to us until November, December of this year. Also, the current contractor or vendor that we have that um, manages our, our bus routes, that contract expires in June. And so there is a Sunday service requirement in the RFP, so, but we don't have those RFPs back because they're not, they haven't been um, let yet. And we won't know the actual cost or um, the, to, to analyze all that until we get that. So um, there, there are just too many unknowns at, that, at this time to, to fund that um, just because we don't know and we don't have an actual cost associated. But th there is a component for Sunday service in the new RFP, and that way we can perform a cost-benefit analysis and then make a decision moving forward on that. I also think that we need to prioritize a new position for a deputy county manager. 
Um, we've been talking about this for two years. We don't know um, Mr. Hankerson's future, I guess. Um, so what I think we need to hire someone that can train under him for the next year with the intent of renewing his contract um, to, for someone to train under him so that you know we'll we'll be in good shape when he when and if he does leave us so i think that should be a priority as well and then the police body cameras for the remaining officers was another priority so i just want to go on the record for that with respect to the parks bond um i've been talking with a lot of you individually um some constituents some you know in other districts but Discussions have been ongoing. I'm very happy to see that after eight years, which is a long time and a lot of patience, that this has come back. We do have a recommendation coming forward in October with a recommended list. Um, and I know that there's been some emails back and forth, and I hope that um, your questions as far as the legality of the bonds being issued at the full 40 million have been answered. If, if not, I, kn I know Jennifer's have. Um, we've responded to individual emails, um, and we'll be happy to give an update on that to anyone that, that inquires. But legally, we can only issue $24.7 million to the debt service, okay? We don't have the monies in the general fund for the remaining 15.3. But here's my plan. I am going to bring, with the assistance of at least two other commissioners that are on board, bring a resolution to the October 25th agenda for adoption we, um, if approved, the resolution will add 0.13 mills to the debt service millage in July. We um, will have the recommended list by October 25th from the Parks Board as to which properties they're recommending that we purchase. The 27.7, the 24.7 million dollars in bonds can be issued in December of 16, and we can purchase properties beginning in January of 17. Then in March, we have a special election for the East Blast, the Schools Blast, and I am going to recommend that we put um, a ballot, a, a referendum on that ballot if it's approved by this board for a new referendum for a new 40, additional $40 million. And I know it's not what everybody wanted as far as the full 40 million now, but if we can purchase parkland at $24.7 million in 2017 and issue a new bond for 40 million, that will give us $64.7 million total in the next two years. And that's my plan. Thank you. Mr. Larkin. Thank you, sir. Uh, as someone said earlier, it's uh, we haven't been smiling a lot, a lot up here. Uh, this has been one of the uh, hardest things that I've gone through in my uh, 12, 14 years plus in public service. And I want you to know that we have not taken any of this lightly, that we've worked diligently each one of these commissioners up here have spent hours, countless hours, trying to figure out what the best way is to go forward with this budget. I myself have come up with at least three, four different plans that we've tried and looked at. Uh, I fully believe that the requests that have been made to this board for budget consideration from department heads, from elected officials and constitutional officers are valid. I think that if we need additional resources to fully provide the services that our citizens expect. However, if we do that and things don't go according to plan, there will be spending to a budget that we can't sustain. 
So I'm in agreement that we support the millage as it stands. The previous uh, budget that we did last year that we just funded with the July millage uh, setting included well over $20 million in additions that were put on through the year that this board approved and it was including that budget. So my goal is, is every one of these requests can come forward again and if we can find the resources and additional funding to support those requests by department head and constitutional officers, then I'll do my best to make sure that those happen. Again, I fully believe that we have done our diligence on this and research and we're making the best decisions we know how. We're not perfect, but we're trying to do what we can to maintain the quality of life and the service levels you expect from the county. I fully support Commissioner Burrell's plan of funding what we can now for the parks bond and seeing where we can go to get some additional funding in the future. And I, again, thank all of staff, all of my fellow commissioners, the chairman, and all the public for their input. And hopefully uh, tomorrow we can all smile a little bit. So thank you. Hey, you should keep it. This process has been a sobering process for uh, me and I'm sure a lot of us up here, even more so hearing you tonight. Um, I will share I'm probably the only commissioner that does not support a continuation of last year's budget. I think that we have been very diligent in reviewing all of the requests and not just us, but staff has worked tirelessly. Our departmental heads have reviewed their needs tirelessly and also have been very patient. They've been very patient because a lot of the needs that they've put on the table have not been needs that have just um, arisen this year, but have been needs on the table for several years. And it's always been, you know, we'll consider it when things get better, when things get better. And it's very difficult when you not only see things getting better for Cobb County, but you know they're getting better for Cobb County and they don't translate to better services and, and um, investment that matches that on our end. I think that we are sensitive to your needs, but we're lacking in some intestinal fortitude to make it happen. I think that we made, we made a decision which has put us in a hole in setting back our millage further than what was ever committed. There was a commitment prior to me and um, um, at least one other commissioner coming on the board to continue to roll back the millage to the pre-recession level. However, we have gone beyond that. We've gone beyond that and lowered it to 6.66, even though if we did at was, as was planned, it would have been 6.83 and we would have had the ability to accommodate some of the requests which have been put forth today. We made a decision, and I can't speak for all of us as to why we made that decision. We all supported it. And um, well, we, the, mill, the budgeting process is a very challenging to understand for Cobb because we set our millage and it's retroactive, then we budget based on, another, on that same millage. When we set our millage for 6.66 for the last fiscal year, I was encouraged to support the 6.66 for last year so that we can meet last year's needs with the um, commitment that we would budget differently, that we will look at this year's needs and be able to move the millage so it reflected that. However, that did not occur. And all of us, we, we all made the decision to set that millage to 6.66 and dug that hole but none of us are willing to make a decision today to get us out of it. And we could do that today. And that bothers me. We have the ability to do it. 
whatever is said today, don't think we don't have the ability to do it. We are making the choice not to do it. There is deference being given to the new chairman, and, and I respect that. I respect that we're willing to consider a new player being on board, but that does not take anything away from our responsibility to you today, right now, based on what was presented. I will support my fellow commissioners because as you all know, it's, things are done here by a simple majority and we have worked hard, we have negotiated amongst each other, and I've been grateful for the amount of communication that we've had in consideration for all each other's goals here. I'm appreciative for all the work of our elected officials, our constitutional officers, our departmental heads, in evaluating the needs of your departments and in using your judgment to present that to us. I appreciate our department manager going through a stack of papers that um, one could not see over on one's desk to whittle down conservatively to the requests that were presented to us today. I have, in response to various requests, um, put forward a list of 16 budgetary items, and I'm just going to, I'm going to be somewhat exhaustive because I think that while you're presenting your request to us, we have not been as transparent as we could have been to present to you all that's going on. And so there's always this, like, what's behind the curtains when it comes to the budget. This has been a different year for that. Typically in times past, the chairman has provided us his requests and we've just negotiated based off of a very blanket list of what he has um, suggested for the county and we've um, made minor changes to that. This year, well, last year we talked about how can we make this a more open process and I appreciate the chairman from and our finance department facilitating a more open process. So this year, we received a list of all of the um, requests for our budget, which included um, revenues for the county and expenditures we looked at. Then we looked at the personnel request, and I'm pleased to say, at least in contrast to last year, we don't have to fight for merit pay for staff, that that's already embedded in this continuation budget. Um, but... Um, we had a general fund expenditure list that was provided, and then we had several operating and capital requests by our department for a total millage impact of 0.37. Those capital and operating requests um, reflect um, public safety, our sheriff's department, libraries, parks and recreation, transportation, superior court, records and mail services, human resources, clerk of superior court, our district attorney's office, the medical examiner's office, elections and registration, the state court's office, community development, chief magistrate's office, cop senior services, information services, the solicitor's office, the internal audit department, the tax commissioner's office, the county attorney's office, probate court, the tax assessor's office, property management's department, juvenile court, clerk of state court, Communications Department, the Board of Commissioners, the County Manager, our drug treatment and education through Juvenile um, Court, Extension Services, County Clerk's Office, Purchasing, Emergency Management, Ethics Board, Support Services, Circuit Defender, other governmental services, nonprofit service agencies, um, public services, and the Finance Department. I run through that exhaustive list because as you share with us some of your concerns, these are concerns that have been assessed through all of these departments and requests before us that people have reviewed extensively and that in this continuation bu budget, we are not accommodating requests from either, from most of them. The only ones that I'm aware of from that list are that are being accommodated are the ones from community development and their requests, which were reflected from a lot of the staffing increases is, is due to an increase in fees that that department has the luxury of doing, which not all departments do. Also, they've been able to help accommodate the chief magistrate's request because she's correlated with some of the work of community development. I've also saw an increased position from the district attorney's office. Um, We've also been able to support public safety as there was a commitment made there. But all of those other requests from all of those other departments will not be met in this budget. 
They've also provided significant personnel requests for several depart um, departments, which are not being accommodated, which would have had a budget impact of 0.25. We had other items requested for additional transit services, sheriff incentive pays that they can keep people on the rolls, right of way mowing increase, our water transfer to get that back down from 10% to 6%, personnel request to have a deputy county manager, community impact grants, board of health, date, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. Every year we know that we have an annual budget and we have spent a lot of time assessing all of these requests put before us. So I can't articulate the level of disheartenment I can't articulate it for all the hours put in in meeting with staff and agencies, let alone taking the community's request and educating you about it. I, and it also is disheartening because we know when we decided to have the Braves come, how quickly that was done and with haste and creativity. And that same level of creativity cannot be taken here to meet some of these requests internal to county government. It's just... It, There has been no Braves request that I think have, we have oscillated on with great length and have actually said no, that I can, think can perceive of on this board. Not one, not one. That's a problem to me. It's a problem to me too, not that investing in our parks supersedes all of the investment that we've made, but I would like to share that my commitment to the parks bond has been one out of, in, that flows from integrity. If the public voted, we have the obligation to respond to that. Some of you stated it much more eloquently than I have, but this is about public trust. Yes when you come repeatedly meeting after meeting after meeting and beating down our doors and explaining why and even giving us the reason to contemplate this because there was a time when we were asked about this and it was, no, it can't be done, it can't be done, it can't be done. You must have heard that for about a year before because that was back in 2013 when we contemplated the Braves. Only after beating down those doors, we realized we could do something about it because somebody on this board had the intestinal fortitude to make sure that we looked at it. And so we looked at it and we contemplated it, but yet today we are, we are not willing to make a tough decision to do it. And I think we've limited ourselves because we made the decision to roll back that millage so steeply. And that wasn't necessarily done in reflection of the quality of service that we were provided, but it was done because my heart of hearts is that it was politically motivated. And that's okay. <laughs> That's okay because this we, 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 we deal in the world of politics as we serve as your public servant, so it's not unreasonable for us to take that into account. But I think what's difficult is when we don't manage that with the continual request to the public, when we are callous to their words and their um, entreaties towards us for, for how we're spending public tax dollars. That bothers me. I think there's a way we could have accomplished more of this with, with working together. Um, let me just share, a, a, I wrote some notes and I haven't even looked at one of them in the comments I made. So I just want to make sure that um, I didn't leave, any, leave anything unsaid. So there was a comment made about a vision and lack of planning. I concur with that statement. We have not fully planned what we're doing. It's like we're always just scraping for crumbs, scraping for crumbs, scraping for crumbs. And we are a better county than that. We should be planning for our future, and we're not doing that. And I don't know what it's going to take for us to do that, other than you make, other than you putting that in our face and demanding it from us. Um, there has been some commitment, and um, that there had was a majority of us who were considering providing a different budget here for today. And um, I just want to reiterate the priorities that Commissioner Burrell shared. Um, we do have a commitment for funding body cameras. 
for funding Sunday transit for um, for um, getting a deputy county manager for funding a right of way mowing increase and for funding community impact grants. Those are the things that we collectively were able to come together and get a majority agreement on up until a few days and things just started to kind of fall apart. And I think that the plan is to continue to hold those as priorities and to vote on those throughout the year. My concern is that really all today, all we're voting on is a plan. A budget is not a a budget is a commitment, but the budget is a plan. Because really what we can commit to legally are is what's reflective of the funds that we have on hand. All we're doing today is saying, this is how we wanna spend our money. Next year, we'll actually make the, we'll set the millage to reflect what we're gonna spend this year, if that makes sense for those who follow Cobb County's budgetary process. So the plan is for us to ask for these things throughout the year, knowing that it's gonna have some type of millage impact and that we're gonna set the millage for that next year. And, um, I want the commissioners to know I'm very supportive of that, but I'm still troubled by that because it's hard for us to say we're going to do something tomorrow when we have the ability to do it today and to ensure that the, we're going to be able to make the tough decision next year for the millage, but we can't make the tough decision next this year. Um, so it's, it's just there. We are in a tenuous position already because there is commitment by the majority of us to fund the pay and class study for our staff. And right now we've had money squirreled away for that, so it's not gonna have a millage impact. But we are already gonna have to fund that next year. And it's my understanding that that's already a 0.5 millage commitment. So if we can't commit to even increasing the millage 0.05 this year, how are we gonna take on that a 0.5 next year just for the pay and class study, let alone all of these other requests? I just don't see us making that jump in one year. What we're gonna base it on is us having an increase, saying that we expect the digest to increase next year and we'll plan accordingly. But the troubling fact of that matter is the digest has been increasing year after year after year. So why would we do something different next year that would have a greater millage impact and we have shown no track record of doing that in the years prior? Again, I just don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know and I don't think it's a responsible way to do it. So for me, I do support um, one thing that was shared tonight, and that is for us to come back next year and see if there's another way for us to fund the parks bond. Because again, out of a matter of integrity, we have to do that. But that's another, but the irony of it is we're asking you to trust us again on another referendum. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> If, if that's the only if, the, if that's the only string we have, then that's the you know if that's the only cards we have you know, been dealt, then that's the cards we play with. But again, I just am disappointed that we have not been not willing to make a decision this year to put count, Cobb County in a better position for right now and for next year and the several years to come. So with that, I can't support the continuation budget, but just know that whatever the majority of the board of commissioners provide to get us to a healthy state of the economy and to of, excuse me, of the county and to provide the service requests and needs of our um, district commissioners that I'm gonna support it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes that we can to make sure that we have the best running Cobb County that we can have. Okay, um, so we have a motion and we have a second and we've heard com comments from many of the commissioners. I'd like to repeat the motion. Just for clarity, the Board of Commissioners adopted the FY17 budget and authorized the chairman to execute the necessary documents. And that was seconded by Commissioner Ott. Call the question. Motion carries 4 1 with Commissioner Cupid in opposition. Bill, again, thanks for your, your team's efforts. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. Takes us to tab six, public comment. The first speaker is Dr. John Morgan. Good evening. Mr. Morgan. Uh, 
I say congrats again, congratulations again for the emerging, but I, I don't know, I, after that, for the emerging billion dollar SunTrust Stadium and Complex, but not so much for the avoiding the parks bond and for reducing the charitable contributions. But also uh, with the Braves, uh, this close, I'm going to plan to attend to some more games, I'm sure, win or lose. Also for the near half million dollar elevator to get our shoppers to their entertainment and for the eight million dollars new squad cars to drive home, we do need them for our protection. Um, but is anyone mindful of the, the Lazarus outside our palace gates, shivering, sick, and dying? Let me explain that one unsheltered homeless person dies every month in our woods, culverts, and under bridges. And for, because I've sung at their memorials, 11 of them in each of the past two years, out of an, an estimated 200 living outdoors, for whom there's no room in the inn, proverbially. We're spending someone's calculated up to $31,000 per homeless person per year. That's at least 6.2 million for an estimated 200 outdoors. On law enforcement, that's 6 million, 6.2 million on law enforcement to arrest, transport these folks, largely for nonviolence like trespassing, public intoxication or sleeping in public places, for jailing them, for emergency room hospitalization, medical psychiatric issues, not to mention court and legal costs, and it's a never-ending cycle every year, the police say. Can we do better? I think so. Together with our law enforcement, let us set up a safe, secure place to take these folks so they don't have to panhandle for basic necessities or to trespass and create mayhem around our public places. Cannot we scrape together a few bucks from budget savings in even this year's budget? I know we can do that to match our private contribution of 100,000, which is now in hand, to 150, instead of deluding ourselves with clear them all out to make way for our prosperity, which does not work, studies have shown. And we say, well, I don't know this Lazarus, but look again and stay with me on this. And looking at this uh, projected thing, the, the center on down, um, in the county's hybrid and defined benefit contribution plan, your board of trustees does a good job uh, investing in mutual funds that give a good return, like the, the Vanguard Standard & Poor's 500 Index Fund, which is about the best, the Cigna and others bringing a respectable 7 to 8% return average this year and an average year, better in other years, but like most, dropped 21% in 2008. And I know we were all skittish, I was. Its holdings, Vanguard's, like mine, includes Microsoft, a top 10, 106 million shares, IBM Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and AT&T, uh, with less shares and others, of course. What happens in a year like that? You cut costs. The most costly, of course, are personnel and layoffs. Since that time, Microsoft and IBM each has laid off 25,000 people. Hewlett Packard, 30,000 at least. And what happens to these folks, and do we care? The folks who made your and my favorite three-in-one printer the Hewlett Packard folks, the software we commonly use, Microsoft. Well, the top third of these layoffs found equivalent jobs. The second scaled back with lesser. The lowest succumbed to no job, lost cars, homes, and wound up homeless. I know because I did their resumes and job searches. But you and the rest of us are now smiling because our stocks and mutual funds are rising again. I'm in that crowd securing our future. Said another way, our retirement is secured on the backs of many of these former workers, now homeless. Am I anti-capitalist? No way. But it's still the best democratic investment system yet devised. However, there is a downside, these cast-off workers. So even as we recycle our trash, let us together recycle these lives with an affordable, practical, proven, successful, community-based plan. And folks, 
we here offer such a plan. And we do are connected with these layoff folks. Don't here is this plan, and I pass around to all of you who do not have them. And you can keep these. No, thank you, sir. Lisa, do you, Ms. Cupid, do you have one of those books? I'll give her mine, Doc. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next speaker is Richard Wanoff. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. My name is Richard Winall. I'm a 30-year resident of Cobb County and a helper of the poor and needy here. Been doing it for about 10 years. As we are now doing in this county, churches and agencies are coordinating help to needy people in the form of replacing lost identification, providing meals, providing uh, lodging, clothing, utility, and rental assistance, help with medications and care, job search services, the list goes on and on. We wish to take this activity to a higher level, though, because there's a greater need. We envision a broader partnership of individuals, of churches, of charities, of businesses, county and city governments using a successful model where police officers partner with social workers to invite and escort the poor, the indigent, unsheltered homeless people to one of two optional shelters. One shelter would be part of the Cobb County Sheriff-operated Adult Detention Center for use as a wet, quote, shelter featuring a pre-arrest jail diversion program offering detoxification, substance abuse, and mental health counseling. That's the one shelter. The other shelter would be for a dry shelter where clients are housed in small individual or family pods with common meeting and eating areas, a shelter that has strong leadership, is flexible in structure to grow as the need grows, that has case management services that include job search, alcoholics and narcotics treatment groups, a GED education, opportunity, bus transportation, access to health care, and driver's license and ID services. The stay there would be 90 days maximum. An ideal location bringing all of this together is a parcel of land on County Services Parkway just off Powder Springs Road, which is a county uh, controlled land. So we put, for you, uh, put before you this plan for consideration a feasibility study you have in your hands based on an operation in Florida that has 10 years of success, vetted by a group of like-minded folks here in this county in serious discussion and thought and prayer and how it would apply to this county. Folks who wish to help alleviate the situation of unsheltered homeless people. This plan is a start. It needs your support and approval to move forward. These people who need our help, uh, further help, are some of whom we know, some of whom have helped and served us. They've made our products in this county. They've served in our armed forces. Who would have predicted that now in our county uh, there would be a, you know, a, plus, a billion plus stadium and commercial center at the intersection of I-75 and I-285? So rather than predicting that outside its walls, widespread panhandling, large-scale police involvement and potential interruption of the people who will attend the functions and spend their money to support the businesses. Instead of that, let us now visualize law enforcement, a law enforcement officer and social worker working together to escort these homeless, poverty-stricken, indigent people attracted to this place, this large commercial enterprise, to rehabilitation and poten uh, potential self-sufficiency. Let us not be like the rich man who ignored the old poor man, Lazarus. Let us be like the shepherd who went after that rogue sheep who wandered away from the 99 and restored it to the fold. And for these homeless folks to bring them toward self-sufficiency. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Ron Siphon. Thank you. 
Thank you, commissioners. Good evening. I'm Ron Siphon. And um, I've, I'm going to try and address two issues tonight. I'm going to start with um, front page in today's MDJ. There's been quite a bit of controversy over this. Uh, there's suddenly an announcement at zoning hearings that anybody who wants to speak in opposition to a rezoning has to do this disclosure of, of any contributions they've made above $250 to a commissioner or a planning commissioner. I don't know why planning commissioners would be receiving anything, but that's what's being required. Um, uh, there are a lot of people who felt like, if that's the announcement, why are you picking on the opposition? So I actually, rather than jumping to conclusions, I actually asked some questions of staff and discovered that, well, what's actually being required is that everybody who has to speak um, has to do a disclosure. Well, I don't know why you're telling, pe telling the public that only the opposition has to make a disclosure. I would recommend that you change what you're announcing at the beginning of the meetings to say that anybody who speaks on any zoning case for or against has to file a disclosure, including the applicant and the applicant's attorney. Um, the applicant has to file regardless of whether he speaks announce all that so that the public correctly understands what you're doing. Um, and then um, if you want to also add that the applicant and the applicant's attorney has already filed this, is supposed to have already filed this and it should already be in the zoning file, but the public needs to uh, go ahead and file a disclosure if they haven't already, I think that would help the public to understand this issue better than is the current understanding. Okay, so the other issue that I wanted to address is you had a work session today, you discussed RSL. You correctly discussed that the public has become concerned about a couple of issues, uh, the density involved in uh, with RSLs when, when they're going into low density residential and also the location. There's actually a third issue that you didn't identify, so I want to cover that. Um, the issue is, um, first of all, it, RSL started out, it was supposed to be near, um, near services. Um, so if it's close to an activity center, the reason that was acceptable to the public way back when we did this, and I was involved in the process of, like 10 years ago, whatever, if you're putting RSLs where it actually serves as a, as, as a step down, as a transition between commercial and residential, that was more acceptable to people. When all of a sudden, within the last few years, things changed and now everywhere in LDR is open territory. We're gonna have five units per acre in the middle of, of LDR, um, nowhere near services. That became an issue, but now there's another issue that, that is going even beyond that, and that is now that we're opening this up and it, it's, it's becoming more and more frequent, we're having areas where it's not just one higher density development in the middle of LDR, three and a half, four, four and a half units per acre, up to five. What happens in areas where you're getting two, three, four, five of these in the same area? Well, collectively, you're really changing the character of an area that is really LDR. One of these might not have done that, but when we start getting multiple RSLs in, a, in an area, nowhere near services, everything's just LDR, you're changing the feel of the whole community. You're changing the character of the whole community to something that's just higher density. So I want you to, as you consider RSL and consider these issues, um, we really may need to go back to, uh, to the idea of locating RSLs close to services 
And even if there are exceptions, they need to be rare exceptions, and we need to not be Thank bombarding you. areas to, to change the character. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Seifert. The next speaker signed up is Ben Williams. Is he still here? And the next speaker signed up is Chris Smith. Still here? I know these are individuals who have spoken previously. Uh, Guinevere Reed? Still here? Not. Mr. Chairman, may I just go ahead and read sure. the individuals signed up for the second period? Uh, the next speaker signed up is Ernest Phillips. I know he spoke earlier. Is he still here? Okay, Ted Varno, are you present? And the last speaker signed up is Joy Kramer. You wish to speak? Good evening, Commissioners. It's me again. Um, and I will be quick because I um, wanted to... Um, touch on two separate issues, um, continuing on the discussion with regards to your look at planning ordinances and RSL, and I was watching the video um, from your workforce, or your work planning session today, and I wanted to call to your attention potentially a third option as you look at developing ordinances for um, senior living, and that is intergenerational communities. There is a, um, a foundation funded by the MetLife Foundation and also um, communities, uh, generational communities united that provides a set of policies and practices for communities to adopt on this very issue. Um, short anecdote about my mom, she's 89 years old and she loves to go out to dinner with my friends. I'm like, mom, why are you hanging out with my friends all the time? And she said, um, because I don't like hanging out with people my own age because all they talk about is how sick they are all the time. So what I wanted to encourage you as you look forward to the future and how we're going to plan for this senior wave that's coming, let's, let's think about intergenerational communities and how we can develop those. Let's not put our seniors in a box or a high density place. Let's see if there's a way to integrate um, young and old together. Um, the next topic that I wanted to talk about, again, is animal control. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a volunteer for animal control. Um, with regards to ordinances, I would encourage you to look at a spay-neuter ordinance for Cobb County. Um, I know that um, ASPCA has some best practices on that that you could use as a model guide. When we have spay-neuter ordinances, um, that reduces the overpet population. The reason that we have great rescue organizations like Southern Journey um, where we ship, literally ship rescue animals up to the northeast is because they have spay-neuter ordinances up there. It is the law that you have to spay or neuter your pet. And so they don't have an over-pet population. When we don't have an over-pet population, we're not euthanizing. And also, it saves money on Cobb County animal control. So I encourage you to look at the pros and cons of adopting a spay-neuter ordinance. And I will send you all email information on all of these tonight that I spoke on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Just to be clear, the names that uh, Deborah Dance, our counselor, called out, those are the names of people that were signed up for the public hearing or public comment at the end of the meeting. We were going to bring them forward if you had any comment to make rather than wait until we get through the red. So... Ms. Ms. Dance, that was the final not speaker, correct? Okay. So we're going to move on to tab seven, our consent. Commissioners, we have one item we need to add, which requires a majority, a supermajority to add since it is a, un, it's an additional item. And that is to add tabs under tab seven, item 27, authorized settlement of a workers' comp, a workers compensation claim on behalf of Berryman, Washington. Is there a second to add that item? Second. Multiple seconds. Call the question. Just one thing. Sorry, yes, Chairman. Um, we received a modified map for agenda item number 19, but in the book is the older one. I don't know if well, our vote Well, ma'am, I appreciate your, your fortitude in getting to that item, but right now we're on the, the issue of adding the um, extra item to okay. the consent. Okay. So we, let's do that know. first. Okay. And that passes... Five zero. Now we'll take up the issue of 
the consent agenda on them. So what is your comment, Commissioner? Uh, yes, agenda item number 19, there was a modification to the map that's not reflective in this map here. Um, our community development director emailed that to us, and I don't know if we need to um, refer to that when we're voting so that. Okay, when I make my motion, mm -hmm. since he provided that to us as part of our um, backup for the items associated with the consent agenda, okay. as there are other revised items as well that were presented to us, when I make my motion, it will be to approve the motion at, or approve the agenda as revised, okay. which would include that map as okay. part of uh, Dana's submission to modify that um, agenda item. Thank you. And I'm, and hold on, it's the bill, it's, yes, it's item number eight. Pardon me? It's item number 18. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. I received a copy of the logo. Turn your mic on. I, I did receive an email from Jason Gaines with the logo in color, but I don't recall the yeah, revised map. We got both of them. We did? Yep. Okay. Not, I, I don't know who all received it. I know I received Dana, them now. Dana, come on up. Would you clarify this and clear it up for us, please? Sorry to wake you guys up that we're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Dana Johnson, Community Development. Um, at the work session, we were requested to revise the map in order to bring it northbound to Macklin Road, uh, following Windy Hill Road and over to the city of Smyrna boundaries. Uh, we have done that, have sent that to the clerk's office. Um, it should have been distributed, so all, all commissioners should have received a, a revised copy as part of the process. And you'll follow up with any commission that does not have it in the possession right now, first, second of the morning, correct? I will actually do it, but as soon as I sit down on my desk, sir. Perfect. Appreciate that. So I'd like to bring forward a motion to approve the consent agenda as revised, inclusive of the two documents Dana provided under separate cover, and authorize the execution of the necessary documents by the appropriate county personnel. Is second. there a, there's a second? Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Commissioners. That takes us to tab. I'm all covered up here. What do you, Jane, in your cat tab number eight, transportation. Director Wilgus. Good morning, Chairman. <coughs> I'm sorry. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. McCullers. Our first item is to approve a consultant <laughs> services agreement with Michael Baker International, Inc. for engineering design services of Mars Hill Road over Alatoona Creek, project number X2115, CCDOT contract number 000967. Mars Hill Road over Alatoona Creek is an approved bridge replacement project in the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a consultant services agreement with Michael Baker International, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $336,690 for engineering design services of Mars Hill Road over Alatoona Creek, project number X2115, CCDOT contract number 000967, authorize the corresponding budget, budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Thank you, Commissioner Weatherford. Motion to approve is presented. Second. Any comments, call a question. Motion carries 5-0. Item two. Item two is to approve a right-of-way mowing and maintenance agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for the I-285 multi-use bridge, project numbers E-4210 and TR-494. I-285 multi-use uh, project consists of a bridge spanning Galleria Drive, I-285, and Circle 70 Parkway to SunTrust Park. The department is in receipt of a right-of-way <coughs> mowing and maintenance agreement from the Georgia Department of Transportation. For terms of the agreement, the county or its de designee will be responsible for ongoing maintenance of the bridge structure and any landscaping vegetation that may be installed as part of the multi-use bridge project. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a right-of-way mowing and maintenance agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for I-285 multi-use bridge project numbers E-4210, TR-494, and authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents in a form substantially similar to that attached and as approved by the county attorney's office. Commissioner Wright. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Call the question. Motion carries. Five zero. Thank you. So that takes us to item three. Item three is to approve an indemnity agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for the I-285 multi-use bridge project numbers E-4210-TR-494. Uh, dash uh, uh, slash TR The I-285 multi-use bridge project consists of a bridge spanning Galleria Drive, I-285, and Circle 75 Parkway to SunTrust Park. 
The department is in receipt of an indemnity agreement from the Georgia Department of Transportation. For terms of the agreement, the county will be responsible for maintaining the lighting and planter boxes installed on the bridge deck in a state of good repair in accordance with GDOT safety and maintenance standards. We request the Board of Commissioners approve an indemnity agreement with the Georgia Department of Transportation for the I-285 multi-use bridge projects number E4210 slash TR-494 and authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents in a form substantially similar to that attached and as approved by the county attorney's office. Commissioner Hott. Motion to approve. Second. Any other comments? Call the question. The motion carries 5-0. Item 4, please. This item is to approve a utility relocation agreement with Georgia Transmission Corporation for preliminary engineering and relocation of facilities on Sandy Plains Road, project number E6060, CCDOT contract number 001036. Sandy Plains Road is an approved roadway safety and operational improvements project in the 2011 SPLOS Transportation Improvement Program. Construction of this project will require Georgia Transmission Corporation to remove and relocate their facilities. Since the facilities may be located on Georgia Transmission Corporation's easement, the cost of the relocation in an amount not to exceed $2,350,464.09 may be reimbursable by Cobb County. We request the Board of Commissioners approve a utility relocation agreement with Georgia Transmission Corporation in an amount not to exceed $2,350,464.09 for preliminary engineering and relocation of facilities on Sandy Plains Road, project number E6060, CCDOT contract number 001036, authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents in a form substantially similar to the attached and as, a, as approved by the county attorney's office. When does that project begin? It's between Piedmont and Ebenezer. But when does it be when when does oh. it begin? Uh, they can't do this relocation until next year, so it'll be sometime later next year. Good. Commissioner Bro. Uh, this is a project that has um, been delayed from the previous blast and previous commissioner also. Yeah, <laughs> that too. But um, I'm glad to see with all the meetings mm -hmm. with the church and the surrounding business owners and that we finally come to an agreement and it is moving forward. There are still some things that have to be done and um, I will be glad to see this. This is the last segment of median on Sandy Plains that, that we'll be um, installing. So... With that, I make a motion to approve. Second. Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Item 5, please. Item 5 is to approve the ranking of the two most qualified firms for development of Cobb County Bicycle and Pedestrian Improvement Plan Update Phase 1, Project Number X2514. Planning studies is an approved project in the traffic management, traffic signal timing, and planning component of the 2016 SPLOS Transportation Improvement <laughs> Program. We request the Board of Commissioners approve the recommended ranking of the two most qualified firms for development of the Cobb County Bicycle and Pedestrian Improvement Plan update phase one, project number X2514, and authorize negotiations for final scope of services and fees beginning with the top ranked firm, WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff, utilizing selection process one competitive negotiations. Thank you. I'll bring this forward in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. Can I make a yes, sir, of course. Um, you know, we, we heard some comments tonight about not having plans, and this is an example where we do have a plan. We also have read recently that um, it was questioned why the county hires consultants at times to do some of these studies. It is not that we don't have capable staff, but in this particular case, you're talking about something that is for Cobb County, but it's also going to be integrated with the region. And so th there are times that it is appropriate to use consultants, and this is an example because it's a regional issue connecting with Cobb. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. Item 6, please. Our final item is to approve the ranking of the three most qualified firms for development of the transit service plan for Cobb Link, a service of Cobb Community Transit, project number X2515. 
Development of a transit service plan will include an evaluation of the overall structure and delivery of the transit service provided by Cobb Link, a service of Cobb Community Transit, to include development of, of, a, of a strategic approach. The TSP will also include a, compila a compilation of a guide for the development of service plans that will improve the overall delivery of services to our customers and meet the evolving transportation and travel needs of both Cobb County and the region. We request the Board of Commissioners approve the recommended ranking of the three most qualified firms for development of the transit service plan for Cobb Link, a service of Cobb Community Transit, project number X2515, and authorize negotiations for final scope of service and fees beginning with the top ranked firm, Nelson Nygaard, utilizing selection process one competitive negotiations. Thank you. I'll bring this forward in the form of a motion. Is there a second? I'll call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Director. Tab 9 is uh, Public Services Agency. Director Cannon. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners, Director. Um, this evening I have one item. It is for the Board of Commissioners to approve a contract with TVS design in amount not to exceed $725,000 for professional design and construction administrative services for the replacement of existing exhibit halls with a new exhibit hall at Jim R. Miller Park. This comes under the 2016 Park SPLOS program, and I ask that you authorize the corresponding budget transactions and further authorize the chairman to execute the necessary documents. Thank you. Commissioner Cupid, this is in your district. Yes, uh, motion to approve. So, any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Why are you there? What's going on at Jim Miller Park? Uh, this week, we're in the middle of the fair. Um, for the rest of the week through Sunday. Um, it's going to be beautiful weather. It's going to cool off a little bit, so please take advantage of that and go out and enjoy yourself. Best fair ever, right? Yes, exactly right. Thank you, sir. Thank Great you. job of your team out there, by the way, to get Thank that you. ready. Your ex-team, I should say. You want, you want to introduce me? Yeah, I guess so. I have to. <laughs> we know. Tab 10, Cobb County Public Safety Agency, Director Heat. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Chairman, Board of Commissioners, and Mr. McCullers. Uh, coming to you tonight, authorize the purchase of a frontline communications of a C-43X-4 mobile communications command vehicle through the Houston, Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Buyers Program Project X1063. This is a 2016 splossed item. Uh, currently, we have vehicle we are using is a 2001 Freightliner Command Center, and it's nearing at the uh, end of its useful life. The departments that utilize this vehicle is uh, Cobb Fire, Police, 911, and our Sheriff's Office. Uh, the the C-43X-4 mobile communications vehicle will be replacing this existing vehicle at a cost of one million two hundred thirty-one thousand four hundred sixty-nine dollars and fifty-six cents with $268,530.44 designated for owner-supplied communications and computer technology to be installed in an effort to maximize cost savings measures offered by Frontline Communications. Payment in full will be made upon issuance of a purchase order, which will result in a savings of $54,640.41. Uh, this Frontline uh, Communications mobile command vehicle is eligible under the 2016 SPLOS and uh, the purchase of the new com vehicle will assist in providing adequate mobile workspace consolidation of processes and workforce energy efficiency with techn technological improvements to enhance communication, improve processes both internally and for the citizens served, and to ensure reliable service delivery. Therefore, my recommendation to the board is to authorize the purchase for the frontline communications of the C-43X-4 mobile communications command vehicle in the amount of $1,231,469.56 and authorize the purchase of owner-supplied electronic and computer equipment not to exceed $268,530.44 and to authorize a corresponding budget transaction and further authorize the purchasing director and or chairman to execute the purchase order and any other necessary documents. Commissioner Oliford. Thank you. First, I'd like to commend uh, Director Heaton uh, for being creative in finding a collaborative or a cooperative in Houston that would save us money and do that and somehow or another figure out how we can buy off that contract. So, congratulations. Motion to approve. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Tab 11, we took care of earlier. It takes us to tab 12, our second public comment. We took care of that earlier. It takes us to 
Tab 17 is two items. The first is an appointment that requires approval. Um, Commissioner Weatherford. Thank you, sir. Is like to make a motion to approve the appointment of uh, Reverend Robert A. Vest to the Public Library Board of Trustees. Second. Any comments? Call the question. Motion carries 5-0. The next item is an announcement which, which requires no approval vote by the board. Commissioner Weatherford. I'd like to announce the appointment of uh, Patty Vaughn to keep Cobb Beautiful Incorporated. Uh, to replace James Douglas for a term to expire December 13, 2031, 2018. Thank you. I'm sure she'll do a great job. Uh, the next tab is our Commissioner Comments tab, uh, tab 14. Commissioner Ott, you want to go first tonight? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to start off with uh, just a story about our police um, as, as I'm doing each, each meeting. Um, on September 5th, Fox 5 News aired a story about Chase Howard. Chase Howard has a rare and fatal form of muscular dystrophy that is um, called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. He was about to celebrate his 10th birthday and had requested birthday cards from anyone who'd send them to him. Cobb County's Precinct 3 Captain Little spearheaded a project to provide Chase Howard a birthday party that involved members of Cobb County Public Safety, Major Van Hoosen, Officer Foley, and Officer Gerard, and other members of the Cobb County Police Department also participated. Howard's family said Chase can't have a typical birthday party because he's lost mobility in his legs. There is no cure and Chase is confined to a wheelchair. So Chase's comments are that he's a special kid. I feel happy every day even though I'm in a wheelchair, but I'm a great kid. And so I just want to commend those officers and the other um, folks from the police department for um, that great outpouring to Chase. Um, secondly, um, we had great news in East Cobb this past week. Uh, Money Magazine, in their annual Great Places to Live, for the first time picked a place in each state, um, saying it was the best place to live. And they picked unincorporated East Cobb for the state of Georgia. Their comments were, the unincorporated area administered by, by the Cobb County government was once dominated by chain restaurants, but is now embracing mom and pops that will give your taste buds a pleasant surprise and make the most of the small town Dixie hospitality. So that was announced last week and the uh, accompanying photo was a picture from the most recent East Cobber Parade. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I just wanna make a few comments about some things we heard tonight during the budget discussion. We heard about all the things that the board should be working with elected officials, staff, and citizens to give them and kind of fill all their needs. The rest of the story is that if all these requested items plus the 2008 park bond plus the proposal from Commissioner Burrell for a new park bond, the increase in the millage would be 3.41 mills. That's a 51% increase in taxes. Yes, the county has some needs. But as the chairman correctly said, in light of the changes in the committee chairman, it is appropriate for this board to defer for that new chairman to be here because we're talking about things that are gonna happen in the future when the current chairman's not gonna be here. And during the budget discussions, I asked how could it be that if the digest was the similar or higher than it was prior to the recession and the millage was the same, how could we not be able to cover the budget? Well, the answer is simple. In recognizing the brave men and women in public safety, those who run towards the bullets and run into the burning buildings, we have increased expenses, most particularly in public safety. So to make a comparison between pre-recession and post-recession is comparing apples and oranges. And so I commend the chairman for, for having the courage to bring forward a continuation budget, and I, I appreciate the fact that this board approved it. Thank you, Commissioner Verrill. Thanks. I'd first like to start off um, thanking our IS department and Mr. Cannon under his agency directorship that we had a little um, issue Friday that um, our server and phone lines were all down. 
and they worked diligently throughout the weekend to restore our emails and and phone messages so I just want to thank them it was kind of nice not having to worry about what who to reach, how we were going to respond on Friday um, it kind of gave us a little break there but um, we were still here working and and offering assistance to Mr. Cannon and the team. So thanks for all your hard work, and we appreciate you getting everything back to normal, with the exception of GIS, but that's coming, right, Sharon? My GIS is up. <laughs> is it? Mm -hmm. That's why we yep, didn't get the yeah. maps. <laughs> um, I'd like to invite everyone to come out to the newly renovated Cobb County Civic Center on Sunday, October 9th, and celebrate Positive American Day. It's from 3 to 5, and it's at the Civic Center located at 548 South Marietta Parkway. And there are flyers on the back table for more information. Um, also, our DOT and Town Center CID will be hosting an open house for the South Barrett Reliever Phase 3 on Monday, October 17th from 4.30 to 7 at the KSU Continuing Ed Center on Busby Drive. Um, it will, it's an open house and we'll have stations for you to come by and look at the new project um, and and get additional information. So we invite you to come out and join us for our open house. And um, also for the animal lovers that are still here with us, Ms. Kramer, um, we, the animal shelter is hosting a Forever Fest on November 5th from 10 to 4. You can come take home your new best friend and see all the animals at discount rates. Uh, our next How to Do Business with Cobb seminar is Thursday, October 20th, here in this room from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, we have Keep Cobb Beautiful is hosting Medical Disposal Day on Saturday, October 22nd, um, from 10 to 2 at the Superstation on Highway 41, Police Precinct 1. It's a great way to get rid of old expired medicine that you don't want to throw out um, or get in the wrong hands. And last but not least, on October, the weekend of October 21st and 22nd, KSU will be hosting their annual Halloween festival. And there are some flyers in the back. It's at the um, athletic fields and entertainment park and there's a lot of events going on within that venue so be sure and join KSU that's all I have thank you Commissioner Cupid thank you. I'd like to encourage those who are um, here or watching us via TV to sign up for my newsletter as we have a number of events that I continue to publicize um, in that electronic newsletter. Very quickly, I'll go through that to get to some other comments. We have a Georgia Blues and Roots Festival, which is taking place at the Mabel House Amphitheater on October 1st from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and encourage you to attend that. Also this week, we have a workshop for nonprofits who are seeking grant funding through our Cobb Community Development Block Grant Office. And that is this Thursday, September 29th at the Ron Anderson Recreation Center at 2 p.m. I'd like to share that right now there is a campaign to recruit 100 mentors within 100 days for Cobb County Schools. We have a lot of children who face the impacts of all that we experience as adults, however, don't necessarily have the ability to deal with those stresses and be able to focus in school. And the mentors that we have through our um, school district have been able to help in helping our children navigate some of those challenges so that they can perform well. And I'd like to encourage uh, those of you who are here, again, watching um, by TV, if you have one hour a week, one hour a week 
to uh, mentor a child through Cobb County School System, that you can sign up at CobbMentoringMatters.org to mentor a child here within our county. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that um, a, a lot of planning has gone on in today's budget, and um, as frustrating as it has been, it's, there's been some silver lining in that I think there's been a lot of communication amongst the board with respect to um, our budget that I've never seen before, and I think that is healthy, and I hope that continues in the following years and even earlier so that we can all have a robust understanding of our budget. And I, um, if I just have any difficulty, I just, you know, I don't know what's going to happen um, next year, and I pray that we'll continue to work together to do what's best for Cobb County and to help set up our new chairman for um, success and um, usher in the next budget season, continuing to work together as a team to do what's best for Cobb County. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Rutherford. Thank you, sir. I, too, would like to encourage everyone to sign up for our uh, weekly newsletter uh, on the website. We do publish a lot of information regarding upcoming events as well as uh, road projects, other projects, and construction that's going on in the District 1. Next week, help us celebrate uh, Cobb's finest year in Public Safety Appreciation Week. That's October 3rd through the 9th. The community is encouraged to show support to our hardworking public safety officials and personnel. And on Monday, October the 3rd, the Cobb Chamber will be hosting the Public Safety Appreciation Breakfast where we will honor the Employee Public Safety of the Year life-saving awards and others like that. So that is a great event. And October 15th in the city of Ackworth is the 12th annual Taste of Ackworth. If you've not been, you have some time. It'd be a great event. It'd be somewhere around uh, 20,000 people that will show up there, and it's a great event to, uh, for you to participate in. And again, I'd like to uh, reiterate what Commissioner Cupid said. I think we've had some great conversations amongst all of us, and we've all worked hard to come up with what we can do to uh, uh, pass a budget that we feel we can live with, and I commit that I'll work forward uh, to making sure that we fund what is necessary to keep this county at the service levels that we expect. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I kind of swore in Commissioner Cupid, I looked over there and saw double for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I did have a commissioner wife with me today, yes. Who are the two good looking guys with oh, you? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I have Nehemiah and Noah Cupid here with me today who have hey, done boys, an come up excellent here job, I think. Come um, up here. As a mom, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Come on. <laughs> I'll come be up. glad to give you my come seat. On. Come on. Come on up. Come up. <laughs> I got to tell you what, boys, I'm proud of you. You sat here for three hours, four hours of painful <laughs> deliberation. You sat here for Absolutely. painful deliberation, and you were excellent. Come here. Sorry. Yeah, one more. Sorry. Oh, that's so Get sweet. Get the chair. Sit there. Sit there. Sit you don't know where that seat's been. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, push I think, I think what we did, I appreciate you guys being such good men, okay? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Let's not do that. Um, so <laughs> we all we all have taken our uh, moments to make our comments tonight, and I appreciate very much again the budget uh, work and the fact that we've uh, moved forward on that. Um, I want to mention one other thing. Uh, one of our leaders, staff leaders, this week is going to have a very very difficult time. Um, as he goes through some very serious surgery, and we know God's speed and God's grace will be with him. Uh, we want to make sure that we as a county community and a county family hold Jim Pearson up as he goes through a very difficult uh, procedure this week and pray for his speedy recovery and that grace, God's grace will hold his family and give them peace. Puts it all in perspective. Boys, we have to make a motion to adjourn. Would one of you just say that, please? You got the mic on. Say, can you say motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Can you say second? Second. Can you say call a question? <laughs> call a question. Everybody pushes the yes button. Pushes the yes Push the yes button. The yes button. The yes. Button. Oh. The yes. Now you have to, right. you have to announce the vote. Say the vote passes 5-0.
Vote passes 5 0. And then you then say, We are adjourned. We are adjourned. There you go. That's very nice. Good job, boys. <laughs>